we have been made to worship God, our creator, the one in whose image we are made. We were made to have communion with him. We were made to worship uh, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Again, the one in whose image we were, we are made. Yet the reality is none of us do that well. I should clarify, we are good at worshiping. And let me explain that. We are good at worshiping. It is the worshiping God part that we have difficulty with. That's the part we don't do so well in. Being made to worship, again, created in the image of God, made to worship God. We have this natural tendency, this natural desire to worship, to desire, to love something beyond ourselves. And our hearts are restless because of that desire, that longing for something bigger, something beyond what we currently know in and of ourselves. So we worship something. This is part of what it means to be spiritual. And each person is a spiritual person because we're created in the image of God and God has breathed into us the breath of life. And that's when human beings became alive with the breath of God. This is the foundation of our spirituality, being spiritual people. Rollheiser notes that spirituality is something vital and non-negotiable at the core of being human. Spirituality is not something on the fringes, an option for those with a particular bent. Rollheiser notes everyone has to have a spirituality and everyone does have one, either a life-giving one or a destructive one. As we look at the spiritual disciplines, what we are looking to do through these is to shape our desires, to direct our passion, to direct our desire to worship, in order that it becomes life-giving, in order that it draws us this desire to worship, this desire or longing uh, for something more, that this restlessness within our hearts leads us into the very presence of God. It's a partnering with God's grace uh, to bring us home. Henry Nouwen had stated, spiritual disciplines are not ways to eradicate all our desires, but ways to order them so that we can serve one another and together serve God. You probably know or, or have heard the two great commandments in Scripture, to love God with all that you've got and to love your neighbor as yourself. The spiritual disciplines are a means of partnering with the work of the Spirit, to partnering with the grace of God, to order our desires, to worship how we ought by loving God and loving one another. Peter, in, in the letters, in his epistles, uh, he notes in 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, uh, he writes, Therefore prepare your minds for action. Discipline yourselves. Set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who has called you as holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. For it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. The disciplines are a means of working out these words of Peter in our lives. He goes on in chapter 2. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Wouldn't it be great to rid our lives of these things? 
Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk so that it so that by it you may grow into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the lord is good